I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, uh, in the inner city as an at-risk child. Um, growing up, I didn't know about God, didn't go to church, anything like that. Um, my mom and dad was in a lot of bondage. Uh, at six years old, I started being uh, molested and raped from six to nine years old. And at nine years old, I had a female babysitter who would make me stay up all night watching adult porn. And if I fell asleep, she would beat me. So that kind of just took me down this road of like just confusion and just pain and and just, just anger and things like that. Um, but something that helped me to escape all that was like art, drawing, and just like that was my way of escape being an artist. In high school, I started to get bullied a lot. It was called faggot, sissy, you're not manly, you're not like the other guys. And that just kind of made me feel like maybe I am gay, maybe this is who I am. And I just started to embrace that lifestyle in high school. Um, in 2007, when I graduated high school, I went down to Atlanta for art school. And soon as after I got to that plane, I started to get approached by guys and I started to just go heavy into that lifestyle. I didn't know at the time that Atlanta was known as the <laughs> gay capital for African-American men. And um, I just got caught up in a lot of bondage, clubbing, drinking, sleeping around, and things was just getting really dark. In 2011, I got kicked out of school, ended up being on the streets in Atlanta, and I ended up going back to Detroit, Michigan. Um, and I couldn't stay with my family because they were still in a lot of stuff and I just felt more comfortable on the streets. And one night I was looking for a place to sleep and I heard that there was a, the stadium was, the football stadium was open all night. And I was like, okay, cool, I can go to the sleep and that's awesome. So I went there to the stadium and I ended up finding out that it was a, a Christian prayer meeting, a 24 hour prayer meeting at the stadium. And a couple years after this moment, I ended up realizing or hearing that um, this prayer meeting was geared to praying for African-American men to be saved and sent into the mission field. So that was just like crazy when I did hear about that. So at that, that night at the stadium, I'm hearing the gospel clearly for the first time. I didn't get saved that night, but it did set me on a journey of thinking about God more. Um, after that event, I ended up going back to Atlanta to stay with my aunt, going into 2012. And um, this is like New Year's Eve. And I put on Facebook, hey, if anybody's going to church tonight and you're not crazy, like, please come pick me up. And somebody reached out and said, I'm going to church tonight. I'm not crazy. I want to come take you, pick you up and take you to church. He came, he picked me up, took me to his church in Decatur, Georgia. And I got saved and baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit that night. I brought the new year in 2012 as a born again believer. Um, after being in that church for like a month, I started to have a real burden for homosexuals, for the homeless, like everything that I was in. I was like, man, God, like you really saved me. You really changed me. And I know several hundred more people that needs to hear this. So I ended up going down to Piedmont Park on one Sunday and Piedmont Park is known as Gay Day on Sunday. So I went down there, I'm walking around, sharing my testimony with people. Some people are thinking I'm crazy, they're chasing me. Some just saw me at the club not too long ago. Now I'm here talking about Jesus. It was just, it was a lot. Um, and one day in me doing that, I ended up coming across a group of people at Piedmont Park worshiping God. And I'm like, what is this? I walk up to them and I'm like, what are y'all doing here? And they're like, we're here praising God. We're here having church. And after this, we're going to go have church in downtown Atlanta and feed the homeless. I said, can I please join y'all? They let me in their car that night and that day and they took me <laughs> to the homeless ministry. And I started doing that with them for about a year and a half. Um, and through that, one one day through that, I started struggling really bad with um, just with lust and just just really struggling with my identity again. And I prayed, God, if you really want me to stay on this road, you have to like change my location. Um, I ended up getting invited to stay with a group of guys in Kennesaw, Georgia. That's like an hour outside of Atlanta. These guys discipled me. They um, they taught me more about Jesus. My life got on got on fire for God. And um, also through this homeless ministry a lady ended up inviting me to a mission trip to another country called Panama. And I was like, man, a mission trip? I never saw the word in the Bible. Like, what is this? And then she told me it was $2,000. And I was like, oh, ma'am, you're not hearing God. I never saw that much money in my life. Um, but I ended up raising all $2,000. And I went on this 10-day trip to Panama, encountered the Lord, sharing the gospel with young people at Teen Challenge. It was just a huge blessing. The last day of that trip, I feel like God says, I have called you to be a missionary. And I'm like, all right, God, here I am. I get back to Atlanta. 
I am looking at a promotion at my job. I'm in this nice house with these guys. I put my two week notice in at my job. People think I'm crazy. And I'm like, I'm going into missions. And then I tell my landlord, I'm not renewing my lease. And um, I started to look for a mission school. In doing research for a mission school, I come across like just this information about unreached people groups, the 1040 window. And I'm finding, I'm finding out about Billions of people, many tribes that do not have no access or little access to the gospel. And I just remember my heart breaking and I was just crying for like a week straight like, God, this is not fair. How can like you, you saved me, you delivered me, you brought me out of darkness, you changed my life. And there's people that do not have the opportunity to experience that because they don't have anybody to tell them about Jesus. And it just kept me up all night. And um, I ended up finding a program at um, a place called International House of Prayer Atlanta. They started a missions program at that time called Finish the Task. And they accepted me. I joined this mission school. And also something crazy that International House of, Atlanta, International House of Prayer Atlanta was at that call Detroit, at that prayer meeting in Detroit where I got saved. And they were a part of the leadership and a part of that movement. So when I walked into this church and they're like, oh my gosh, you're from Detroit. Like we were there at the call of Detroit praying for God to raise up African-American missionaries. And now you're here joining our organization. It was absolutely insane. Um, through finished the task at International House of Prayer. I've been to um, unreached people groups. I lived in these countries reaching Muslims with the gospel. And one country that I was in, I was told by local missionaries that I was the first African-American missionary in this country in the last two decades. Um, it was just, it was insane. Um, also through this, you know, through working with Arab Muslims, I realized that there was always such a hardened heart towards me because of me being dark skinned. And I just remember like, all right, God, like, I don't know how you want me to share the gospel with these guys when they're not even wanting to listen to me. But then I ended up sharing the gospel and seeing African, dark skinned African Muslims come to the Lord. And um, I used to pray like this, God, anywhere but Africa. But as I'm starting to lead these African Muslims to the Lord, I'm like, all right, God, if you want to use me with the people that I look like here, I lay down my preference. I lay down my life and you can send me to Africa. <laughs> a few weeks later, my company ended up asking me to go to East Africa to um, to do missions. And I said yes. Um, in missions in East Africa, we started a Bible school training local or native Africans to reach their own people with the gospel. I ended up opening up a small dance studio, doing photography and teaching music, and really seeing people encounter Jesus through the arts. And it was just so awesome because I'm basically a missionary, just being myself, and I'm seeing people encounter God, get baptized, receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, and love God with their talent. It was just amazing. Right now, I'm getting ready to move to North Africa, where I hope to, again, reach Muslims with the gospel and to see Jesus exalted in these nations. Um, one thing, I just remember one year, I was really being persecuted a lot. And I was just like, you know, one Muslim grabbed my beard and started to pull my face. And after that moment, I was like, you know what, God, I hate these people. They don't love you. They don't love me. Like, send me back to America. Um, but in that moment, I felt God really just shake or put into my spirit that when they stop being worthy, he's still worthy. And we're not in these countries necessarily so people won't go to hell, but we're mainly there because he's beautiful, he's worthy, and he's deserving of every tribe, tongue, and nation. That these people in these countries with no access to the gospel, or you know, they're terrorists or prostitutes, whatever it is, that they are God's inheritance, you know, that they belong to him, he desires them. And how dare we withhold that to, from them because of fear and because of self-preservation. So I've seen many people accept the Lord and not just because like you know of something just churchy they accepted him because they encountered him they saw his beauty his worth his sacrifice to have him and they started to worship him so I'm just so thankful that I get to be a part of Jesus receiving the reward of his suffering and yes it's costly yes it's lonely yes it's painful yes it's hard but it's also glorious because I get to do this with God not apart from him not just do some Christian thing to get his attention but because I'm loved by God my response to that love is going to these places that he may have what he deserves and that's the that's the hardest and darkest places every tribe tongue the ones that don't even want them we have to go and share with them because he's deserving of that and that's the only thing that has to sustain me to not quit that God is worthy and as I love him worship him encounter him that I get to respond by laying my life down for these people that he may be exalted so just thank you for this moment I love y'all and I pray that this blesses you in Jesus name amen